Good evening, everyone. Happy 2022. I'm Maria Rodriguez with Coia Health coming to you live for our very first virtual wellness chat of the year. And we're kicking off the new year, telling you all about the latest piece of technology here in our medical center called the Robotic Surgical Assistant, or ROSA for short. Now, we will tell you why doctors and patients alike absolutely love this piece of technology and how it helps for knee replacement surgeries. Um, we will also be showing you some footage of the ROSA live in action, so you won't want to miss this. Please stay tuned. As always, we encourage you, our community members, to chime in and send us your questions on the comment section below on Facebook or texting us to 559-280-9374 or email them to questions at coweahealth.org. We have two of our orthopedic surgeons who use the ROSA and will tell us all about it, and here they will introduce themselves. We will begin with Dr. Seth Kreiner. Hello, welcome. Am I muted? You're, okay, I'm You're muted. Right. Good. Hi, my name is Dr. Seth Kreiner. Sorry about the little bit of pixelation on the camera. Don't know why it's doing that. But anyways, uh, I work with Orthopedic Associates and I've been in Visalia now for six years. I uh, did medical school at Western University in Pomona, California, did my residency training uh, with Samaritan Health Services in Corvallis, Oregon, uh, where Oregon State's at, and I did a trauma fellowship uh, at the University of New Mexico before uh, joining Orthopedic Associates in uh, 2016. I currently uh, do uh, mostly general orthopedics and then uh, still do quite a bit of trauma uh, when I'm on call. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to uh, talk about the latest uh, and greatest that we have brought to Kauia, uh with regards to uh, robotic total knee arthroplasty. Thank you, Dr. Kreiner. We also have a video that we're working on specifically talking about the orthotrauma cases that he sees here at Kauia Health. So that will be coming up in the next few weeks. But also we have Dr. June Kim with us. Welcome. Orthopedic surgeon. Uh, believe it or not, I did uh, the same training and residency uh, with Dr. Kreiner. Uh, following that, I went to Wake Forest Baptist Health in North Carolina and did a fellowship in total joint replacement there. Um, I'm originally from Los Angeles. So I'm very happy to be back in the West Coast. So thank you for uh, joining us tonight. We're happy to have you here with us. And now we're going to start with a brief presentation by Dr. Kreiner. He will talk to us about what ROSA is, and then afterwards, we will have a Q&A session where we will have a chance to answer all of your questions. And we will begin with Dr. Kreiner. He will go through the slides and tell us all about it. Okay, so uh, robotic knee replacement advancements. Uh, so kind of over the last five years uh, in the land of total knee arthroplasty, uh, the we've been getting a lot of advancements with uh, robotic assisted uh, knee replacement. Uh, and uh, here at Kauia, uh between myself, uh, Dr. Kim and Dr. Ian Duncan, who's uh, not presenting with us tonight, but is also one of our partners at Orthopedic Associates, um, we evaluated uh, multiple uh, systems to do robot assisted total knees uh, and uh, this system, uh, the uh, Rosa robot system uh, from Zimmer uh, was the one that had kind of all the bells and whistles that uh, we felt would uh, help our patients out the most. Uh, and so uh, here we go. So let's go to the next slide. So, uh, you know, some of this is, you know, some of the stuff that we get from Zimmer, but, you know, they talk about a new knee for a more active you. Uh, and in order for uh, us to use this robotic system, uh, the Rosa knee system, you actually have to go through training uh, with Zimmer. Uh, so on multiple occasions uh, prior to actually using the robot on a patient, uh, I went uh, and did essentially three courses worth of uh, work with Zimmer at different things. They, they brought a, um, a trailer actually out to Visalia so that we could uh, practice with the robot. Uh, and then they brought it a, again a second time 
Uh, and then I was out at a uh, conference in uh, early August of this year and uh, worked with the robot once again. Uh, and, you know, we do all these things uh, in preparation uh, so that when it comes time to using the robot, um, uh, that, that we don't have hiccups, more or less. Uh, and so what's really wonderful about this system is the Rosa knee, we can use it to personalize our approach to total knee replacement. Um, not all, all knee, uh, not everyone's knee is the same. There are different sizes. Um, the deformities that result as a re, as a result of arthritis um, are different uh, for each patient. And so this allows us to um, kind of address each patient's uh, unique anatomy. Uh, and so here to the right, uh, on the screen on the right, you can see a picture of myself, Dr. Kim and Dr. Uh, Duncan after we did one of the trainings at Kuiya with uh, our staff so that we could get the staff acquainted with it. Um, and uh, you can see the robot between us and then there's a, a nice screen that uh, we displays the information uh, that we get from using the robot. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. Uh, and so why do we like the rows and knee? Uh, improve patient function and uh, satisfaction. Um, there's some data that says that a robotic total knee arthroplasty, uh, the patients have less pain after surgery. Anecdotally, um, some of us have, have noticed this. We, we haven't gotten to do it on enough patients to really definitively, I would say, prove it one way or another, but anecdotally, we've, we've definitely seen patients have less knee uh, pain after surgery. Um, this platform is surgeon-centered, so it, it, it's there to, it, it assists me during surgery, it helps me make decisions during surgery, because um, of the data that gets input in during surgery. But at the end of all that information being put in, I'm the one doing the surgery. Um, and so uh, where some of the other platforms, uh, the robot is uh, performing the surgery, which um, doesn't make some of us very comfortable. Uh, and what does this system do? It takes into account uh, the uh, patient's bone, bony alignment, uh, where there is cartilage lost as a result of the arthritis, but then in other areas there might still be cartilage. Um, and it also takes into account the soft tissue that's around the knee, uh, and it allows us to measure multiple things. Uh, and this is done in real time during the surgery uh, and, and assists us uh, in making these decisions. And then after we've done the surgery and we've done the various things that we need to do to put the implants on, we can actually uh, recheck everything and make sure that we did do what we thought we were, were doing. Uh, and uh, so far from using it, uh, it's been... Uh, pretty impressive to see how uh, accurate it is. It, it is as advertised by the company that we purchased this from. Um, and then it, it's from a surgeon standpoint, it is fairly uh, intuitive, uh, which is important because it helps with the uh, learning curve. Uh, and so, and again, in this picture, you can see to the right of the words, you can see uh, one is the thing on the left is what has the cut blocks that we use to make cuts during surgery attached to it. And then uh, the other piece is uh, an arm that is used to, that we use to record things that we measure uh, during surgery. Uh, next slide. Uh, and so uh, the total knee arthroplasty that myself, Dr. Duncan and Dr. Kim uh, use with this uh, robot is called Persona. Uh, and uh, one of the things that's really cool about this is the persona has uh, 21 different femur sizes. And so uh, they increase in two millimeter increments. So that's obviously very small, uh, which makes this very customizable uh, to patients. Uh, and then they come in standard and narrow because, uh, which we don't need to get into, but um, that that can be very helpful uh, during during the case. Uh, 
and this is this is the most comprehensive sizing that you can get on the market right now also um the uh persona anatomic tibia it has better bone coverage because of its shape than uh some of the other uh tibias that are out there uh from other companies so uh and then uh the there you can see in the picture on the right you you see the metal piece on top and the metal piece on the bottom if you look closely in between we have uh the plastic piece and that bearing comes in one millimeter increments, uh, which allows for us to really fine tune uh, uh, some of the tension that we can put in the knee. Uh, and this is one of the few systems out there that allows uh, for us to do this. Uh, most of them go in two millimeter increments. So next slide. Uh, this is a picture uh, of one of the screens that we're looking at during the surgery with all the landmarks we get. So you can see this is only the landmarks that we're measuring on the femur. Um, there's a whole other section of landmarks that we measure on the tibia. Uh, we also, during the surgery, uh, get uh, the what's called the hip center of rotation. Uh, and uh, all those things help us with taking somebody's knee who oftentimes is not straight at the beginning of the case because they've uh, worn down their cartilage and gotten so such significant arthritis and it allows us to essentially make the leg uh, straight. So uh, next slide. Uh, this next uh, slide is really cool because this is where we're able to check uh, the soft tissue. So uh, everyone has ligaments in their knees. And so uh, there are two particular ligaments uh, that we are checking in this scenario or on this page, uh, the ligament on the inside of the knee and the outside of the knee. And we can check and see how much tension is in these ligaments. And this is, important for us to know because uh, it gives us information on what types of bone cuts to make in order to help us uh, straighten the leg out and make the knee a, a balanced, stable knee uh, when we're done. So uh, next slide. Uh, and then after we've put in all this data, uh, you know, in all these different points, the uh, robot can tell me what the uh, component size is for the femur. It can tell me what the size is for the tibia. Uh, it uh, does things based on the size of the plastic bearing piece. So if I want to put a size 10 in or a size 11 or a size 12, uh, we can adjust things uh, accordingly. And uh, one important thing that I get asked very commonly in, in the office when I'm talking to patients about knee replacement is, well, how much bone are you removing? We only remove enough bone to cement our implants uh, onto the end of the femur and the uh, tibia. And so uh, this screen, uh, after we've put all that imp data in to the computer, we're able to make sure that we're only taking as much bone as we need to uh, and also to help us make sure that we are aligning the knee and making it straight. So next slide. Uh, and so this is uh, just another screen that gives us input back on uh, some of our live cut values uh, after we've made uh, cuts. We can measure in and check and see, okay, did we do what we had planned on doing, uh, which is very uh, helpful for obvious reasons. So next slide. Um, so that is all we have uh, with regards to talking about the ROSA, but I think the biggest thing to get out of that without you know getting into too much detail is the amount, the volume of information that 
you know, we now have at our fingertips that we uh, didn't have uh, prior, you know, with uh, previous ways of doing knee replacements. Uh, and then the one other thing I would add that I haven't talked about, a lot of these robotic knee systems require us to get a CT scan of the knee in order to use the robot. And so this system does not require a CT scan in order for me to use it, which is uh, decreases the cost for the patient. Um, and uh, it's just more convenient. Uh, so. Thank you, Dr. Kreiner. Again, we're reiterating what he just said. This does not require a CT scan, which is much more cost effective for patients. Um, Dr. Kim, we're gonna go straight into the questions. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kreiner mentioned that this piece of technology, it, it helps assist the doctors in doing surgery. So it's not just the robot doing it alone. Again, what, how beneficial is this for our community and how does this piece of technology help our teams perform these state-of-the-art procedures? Well, you know, I believe that orthopedic surgeons in general, we do a really good job of doing uh, knee replacements, uh, knee surgery. Uh, but personally, I think that surgeons as, as, as a whole, we should always be striving to be better. Uh, we should always be trying to improve how we treat our patients. And that can be through technology, it can be through surgical technique, uh, or even through research. Um, and now we have this you know, great uh, brand new robotic technology that we can utilize for knee replacements here at Korea Health. Um, the robot really allows us to dial in precision. You know, we cannot do the things that we could do with the robot just with simple manual instrumentation. And we're talking millimeters here, 0 0.5 millimeters, one millimeter. We just do not have the ability to do that with manual instrumentation. And now we can do that with the robot. Uh, robots get information with regards to soft tissue balancing, bony resections, even deformity. And ultimately what it, it comes down to, we're just better surgeons in the operating room and hopefully uh, uh, this will be better for the patient. Thank you, Dr. Kim. And now we'll go on to Dr. Kreiner. We have some fans on our social media. Um, your former patient Chelsea Chavez says, Seth Kreiner, Dr. Kreiner is amazing. He did my meniscus surgery and I couldn't be happier. So we have some fans on the line and I know a lot of our community members are watching and are very thankful for your help and what you provide for our community. But for your question, the million dollar question, what type of patients require knee surgeries and would be a great fit for the ROSA? Yeah, so uh, patients who are qualify for total knee arthroplasty. Uh, so uh, we always start with conservative treatment first. Uh, and so, uh, or first off, we're gonna get imaging that shows what the problem is. You know, do they have arthritis? How bad is the arthritis? Uh, you know, what state, you know, is it mild arthritis? Is it moderate arthritis? Are they just frank bone on bone arthritis? And, and so once we've gotten that information, the next part of this is what do we do? Can we do conservatively potentially to avoid what is a pretty big surgery and, and takes a good amount of time to get over? Uh, and so what are conservative treatments? Cortisone injection, you know, is one of the first things. Physical therapy for people with knee arthritis can be, it's one of the few areas of arthritis in the body where you can do therapy with somebody and it can significantly improve their pain. Uh, it, that doesn't usually work with hip arthritis. It definitely doesn't work with uh, shoulder arthritis. Um, and then there are uh, the, uh, I call them lubricant injections, but it's more or less like putting oil in the engine. So once, a lot of times, once I've done all those things with the patient, if they're still having significant knee pain that's debilitating, causing them to use a cane or even a walker, I've, I've had people come into my office in a wheelchair. Um, you know, those are the people that we have a very high likelihood if I go do a knee replacement on them, that it will be successful and significantly improve their pain. And then as far as who qualifies for the rows a robot, there's no nothing other than uh, if you have knee arthritis, 
you know, we have this tool that we can use. I don't use it on every single patient, uh, but I do use it probably on half of the cases that I do. So. Thank you, Dr. Kreiner. Now, Dr. Kim, what symptoms or signs should we look for when we know it's probably time that we need knee replacement or knee surgery? Yeah, just to go off of Dr. Kreiner's comments here, uh, you know, we have conservative and surgical options to treat knee arthritis. You know, we're all surgeons. We love to operate. We love to cut. But, you know, we want to do what's right for the patient. And so, you know, the conservative things, you know, like you mentioned, injections, medications, bracing, physical therapy, weight loss, activity modifications, dietary changes, and use of even a cane, walker. You know, these are all options that we can uh, use without surgery. But when these conservative options are no longer effective, you know, you're having trouble walking, your quality of life is diminishing, you're now stopping and hesitating to do basic activities. For example, if you're trying to go to the grocery store and now you're, you're hesitating because your knee hurts, I think that's when it's a good time to think about surgery. Um, so, yeah. Perfect. Now, going off on that, Dr. Kim will stay on you. Um, what if a patient decides to go to physical therapy or they've, di they've had the cortisone shots? What kind of length um, of time do these kind of treatments have um, for patients? And does it vary? Because some patients might be a couple of months, a few months. Yeah. You know, what, what are the um, treatment options there? And how long should they delay it before they decide to have the surgery? So, you know, cortisone, uh, cor cortisone injections are very effective. Um, I only recommend use of cortisone injections if they're effective. When it gets to a point where it's bone-on-bone -bone arthritis, it's severe and it's end stage, and they're no longer really helping you, then I would not recommend continuing on with the cortisone injections. Certainly, if they're effective and uh, they're giving you relief, um, then you know we can keep doing those injections every three months. Uh, with regards to physical therapy, I think that's very important to keep your knee mobile, for you to be mobile, to keep your knee healthy, um, but um, ultimately, it really comes down to, you know, again, pain on a daily basis. You just can't walk, you can't do things that you enjoy. And, you know, you know, physical therapy is not going to stop arthritis. A very common analogy that I use in clinic is, you know, think of your knee or, or your cartilage as, you know, tires in your, on your car. You know, the treads on your tire are starting to wear out. And sooner or later, it's going to be down to the metal, to the rims. And so... The fix for a worn out tire is a replacement, you know, you, you replace your tire. So, you know, get to a point where, you know, cortisone injection will not help. Physical therapy won't help. You, you, you can't sleep at night. You know, you have pain every day. You're taking pain medications every day. Um, then I think that's a good time. Um, you really should consider uh, knee surgery. Thank you, Dr. Kim. And for the next question, we also have some footage that we want to share for the Rosa Live in Action. But Dr. Kreiner, how does the state-of-the-art technology like ROSA demonstrate the continued innovation that we here at Kuwait Health are striving for and doing to keep our patients safe and well and provide that high-quality, world-class care? Well, it's, it's definitely uh, one of those things that we knew has been coming around the corner. Uh, and uh, really, the thing that kept us from doing something like this sooner than we did at Kwea is myself, Dr. Duncan, Dr. Kim, um, some of the other surgeons who do knee replacements, we were just waiting for uh, something that uh, we felt was going to actually really help us. You know, I, I'm not really interested in uh, the investment for the hospital on their side. You know, this is, th these things are not inexpensive. Uh, you know, I'm not interested in asking the hospital to make that kind of investment if it's actually not going to provide a benefit to the patient. And so, uh, unfortunately, you know, the, our administrative team, uh, that we work with, in, uh, in the surgery department, uh, when it comes to purchasing really expensive pieces of equipment, you know, they, they were on board with, uh, doing this once we, we found something that, you know, the surgeons all agreed, um, uh, uh, was worthwhile, uh, cause there are, you know, there are a few other systems out there 
uh, that are commonly used in other uh, hospitals that uh, you know not all of us were on board with using. So, uh, so it's you know it's a it's a CUI is doing what it needs to to you know try and deliver you know top of line care and and uh, you know. Uh, we, of course, appreciate the fact that they're willing to make that investment uh, in the equipment. So, Thank you, Dr. Kreiner. And on that note, Dr. Kim, um, is this piece of technology rare in our community? Um, I know there are several pieces of technology or other state-of-the-art technology that other, other places might be able to provide, but ROSA is really specific to, to the needs of our community. So is that rare here in the Central Valley? Uh, yes, uh, robotic technology, I mean, you know, we do utilize robots in other fields other than uh, orthopedics, whether it be ob general surgery, but robotic technology in orthopedics is extremely rare in our community. I believe we're the first hospital um, in Tulare County uh, to obtain the robot uh, robotic technology. And even across the United States, I uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, a majority of hospitals do not have access to a robot. Um, uh, so I think we're very fortunate to have this equipment um, and this technology that's uh, available for our community and for our patients. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Now, Dr. Kreiner, we just received a question on social media. Um, Robert Blatter asks, what is the lifespan of this type of knee replacement? Uh, so fortunately, uh, knee replacements, hip replacements are lasting now. Uh, 30 to 40 years. Uh, this has not always been the case. Uh, previously, uh, when when certainly when I started training uh, back in 2010, uh, we were still seeing uh, knee replacements and hip replacements loosen after about 10 to 15 years. Uh, and that issue uh, had to do with the plastic piece that goes in between the the two components and uh, probably about 15 years ago or so they changed how they processed that piece and so it where the rate that that piece wears at is significantly lower now and so we get less of the particles from that piece getting into the bone which then the body would attack those and cause the prosthesis to loosen. And that's why historically a lot of people have heard, oh, these you know, joint replacements only last 10 or 15 years. Uh, and that's just, you know, fortunately for Dr. Kim and myself, you know, we're in an era with joint replacement now where uh, the frequency with which we see a loose component, I mean, it definitely happens, but it's not not remotely as common as it used to be. For your answer, Dr. Kreiner. Now, Dr. Kim, we'll go back to this. You guys mentioned it early on in the talk, but as the questions are coming in, people are wondering what kind of patients are or what patients are eligible to do um, or to use the ROSA for their knee replacements. Um, you know, I don't consider a patient not eligible for the ROSA. I think uh, if a patient is at a candidate for knee replacement in general, then they are candidates for the use of ROSA. Um, certainly patients who are candidates for knee replacement are, again, those with end-stage arthritis. You know, they've tried the conservative options, um, and now, you know, they're looking for surgery. And once they sign up for surgery, yes, they're candidates for the ROSA. Now, we don't use ROSA on every, every patient, but they are candidates for them. Um, um, the other things that we also look for in terms of patients is that, you know, we'll look at patients as a whole, you know, we'll look at their comorbidities, we like their BMI, their social situation, uh, and we want to make sure that we maximize a success for our patients. And so a lot of factors go into it, but, you know, uh, any patient who is a candidate for knee replacement is a candidate for, for Rosa. Perfect. Dr. Kim, and we'll stay on you because we have another one of our viewers. Larry Gonzalez, who is asking, in terms of weight and BMI, what is the upper limit that will prohibit this type of surgery? Di is diabetes a factor that can also be part of the approval of this decision? Uh, that's a good question. You know, uh, historically, uh, you know, we used uh, BMI of 40 as a cutoff. Uh, that being said, uh, there's also research uh, showing that there are a good amount of patients that would do well without complications, even with a BMI of greater than 40. 
So it also depends. You know, if a patient, let's say their BMI is 44, but they demonstrate to us, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to lose weight, I'm doing exercises, I'm changing my diet, they come back, let's say their BMI is 41, then I would make an exception at that point. You know, they're demonstrating that, you know what, they're really serious about getting their uh, knee surgery, they're, they're putting their time and effort. Uh, they're not going to say, oh, you know what, just because it's over 40, you're, you're, not, you're not a candidate for surgery. Uh, and diabetes does uh, play a role. You know, we we do check your A1C, which is basically your blood sugars, uh, over the past three months. You know, uh, you know we we in our, in our prior Dr. Donkey and Dr. Kreiner and I, we we typically use a cutoff of about eight. Um, if you're so, if it's above an eight uh, pre-op, then you know we send you back to your primary care physician to uh, work on your diabetes. And the reason we do this is we want you to succeed. You know, we want you. Uh, to do well after surgery you know we don't want you to have a complication so we're trying to minimize risk for you uh, and and so you, you know and so you can be mobile again Dr. Kreiner re remind us how long have we had the Rosa here with us and what kind of uh, result and feedback are you getting from patients who have um, had procedures with Rosa now and have seen the recovery process of it as well uh, I believe we I uh, got it around August, uh, and I think we started using it in September. Uh, it's been a little bit uh, challenging to use it at times because with uh, COVID issues and uh, uh, the hospital inpatient volume, uh, we were limited in our ability to do uh, any inpatient surgeries for actually a few months. Uh, and so that really negatively uh, impacted our ability to use it. But uh, regardless, uh, so far the patients, you know, I've used it on, you know, the, it, it's, not, it's not the big thing I sell to people. They're mostly just excited that they're getting their knee replaced because it hurts so much. And then usually when I tell them about the robot and how it helps me, you know, people are pretty excited about that because it is pretty cool. Uh, and, uh, so far, uh, on the, I've used it on, you know, a few very straightforward knee replacements, uh, and it's super smooth. Uh, and I've also had a couple of really challenging, uh, knee replacements. I have a lady who probably has the worst arthritis I've seen in the last year that I used the robot on. And, uh, I was very uh, happy that I was using the robot because it, you know, at the end of it, you know, her knee was perfectly straight. Um, and, uh, she, you know, she's having so far in the early stages of follow-up right now, she's doing very well. And I believe she's away from her cane and walker at this point. Uh, and so, you know, it, it, it's definitely, it's, you know, it's another tool in my bag to help me, you know, make sure I get a good outcome for patients. So. Thank you, Dr. Weiner. It's just, it's beautiful to hear these type of, um, testimonials because it just shows how amazing this type of technology and your expertise helps our patients love their life again. But for Dr. Kim, surgery can be scary and people, especially for your knees, you, you walk, you, you, people are very active. Um, what is the best advice you can give to patients who might be thinking about getting surgery or will have surgery uh, or a knee replacement? And what can you tell them to ease their concerns or what, what is the best advice you can provide? Yeah, sur surgery is certainly scary. You know, if I were getting ready for a knee replacement for myself, if I were a patient, I, I, I would be terrified. Uh, so I think, but that I think that is normal uh, to feel anxious, to be concerned, to be scared. Uh, I think that those are all normal. But I think the best advice I can give somebody waiting knee surgery is talk with another patient, whether it be a friend, a family member, acquaintance, you know, who, who has already gone through the surgery. Ask them about their experience. Uh, one of my mentors from residence used to always say, you know, we treat our own patients like our own mother, grandmother, or any family member that you're going to be all right. So that's how I approach my patients. And I, I, you know, I tell them, you know, go, go seek out other people who've had it. Um, and you know, that is probably be a lot stronger coming from someone they know rather than me telling them, Oh, it's going to be okay. And, you know, I, you know, I've seen a lot of patients who, who've been referred to me and it's because their friend had, had knee replacement uh, with me. They had a good experience and now so they now they feel comfortable absolutely thank you dr kim dr kreiner let's say 
uh, somebody has had their surgery, what happens after? Um, how long is the recovery time? And will people have long lasting pain or effects after surgery? So a uh, very complex question because uh, no two patients are the same. But uh, generally speaking, uh, we have quite a few people we are able to send home the same day from surgery. Uh, the people who qualify for that need to have less than three to four steps to get into their house. Uh, their BMI usually needs to be under about 35. They can't be on chronic pain medications because uh, those we have to be able to control pain with pills if you're going to go home. Uh, and then the rest uh, get admitted uh, overnight to the hospital. And the majority of those then go home the day after surgery. Uh, everybody works with physical therapy uh, before we'll send them home. Uh, it's quite rare nowadays to send people to a rehabilitation facility. Uh, pretty much the only people that go to those nowadays are people who live at home by themselves and have no help. Um, but if you live at home with somebody, uh, you know, we pretty much are able to get you to a point where we can safely send you home uh, within a day, within 24 hours of surgery. Uh, and then as far as kind of longer term picture, I tell patients frequently that in the first two to three weeks, uh, they're going to have doubts about whether they did the right thing because this is uh, quite a painful surgery to go through. Um, and uh, but usually around week two or three, people definitely start to turn the corner. You know, and this is the average patient. I have patients who come in without a cane at two weeks, not infrequently. Um, and so uh, but, you know, this is, I think, the average what to expect. Uh, and then by six weeks, uh, virtually everybody's away from the walker by six weeks. Uh, and then uh, by three months, uh, people, you know, people still probably have a little bit of a limp in their, their gait, you know, at three months. But for the most part, they're, they're doing pretty good. Uh, how long does it take to completely get over a knee replacement? and start to forget which knee you had the knee replacement in, if your other knee is good, that can take a year, you know, cause, cause at three months, you still have some weakness. Um, you're still gonna, you know, have some challenges with longer distances uh, of walking. So, uh, but I, I would say the majority of people are pretty happy by about three months and, and everybody by about three or four weeks is starting to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel and they recognize that that oh, okay yeah this is really going to be a huge life changer for me uh in a positive way so thank you dr kreiner and i'm dr Kreiner, we have another question on social media um mm -hmm. we have diane garcia asking what if a patient is elderly let's say in the late 80s and what treatment options are available for them if surgery is not an option yeah, so if surgery is not an option, uh, we have cortisone injections available. Uh, we have both the standard cortisone injection. We also have a longer acting one that could potentially be effective even up to four months. Uh, not only do we have cortisone injections, we also have hyaluronic acid injections, which are basically these gel injections or what we call lubricating shots, where we give them, you know, classically, you know, once a week for three weeks. Uh, so those are the injection side of it. Um, you know, some patients ask for PRP, which we do offer in our clinics. Uh, besides the injections, you know, we have oral medications, whether it be Tylenol or anti-inflammatory medications, whether it be ibuprofen, Aleve, Motrin, or even, you know, prescription medications like Celebrex or Meloxicam, Naproxen. Uh, besides those, I, I think bracing, physical therapy, and use of an assistive device, whether it be a cane, walker, crutches, those are all options. Thank you, Dr. Kim. And we've also received a question regarding um, the, uh, one second, answering, somebody returning the answer for Robert Blatter, who said he was ans asking about um, a knee replacement earlier and said, thank you, Dr. Kreiner. But he has a follow-up question. He asked, do you happen to know how this compares to nano knee replacement? And this one is for Dr. Kreiner again. For manual knee replacement? Nano knee replacement. Oh, nano knee yeah, nano knee is a marketing campaign, uh, and it's nothing more than that. 
I've I've been asked this question. I get asked this question about once or twice a year. I've haven't gone and read about it recently, but I remember going and reading about it, and my impression was, oh, this is just a marketing. It, it's very slick marketing uh, on the part of uh, of that company. But uh, I, I don't have I don't know I don't know what about the nano knee. What I know about the Zimmer Rosa robot knee or Stryker's Mako knee. Um, Smith and Nephew is working on coming out with their platform, uh, and uh, Depew Synthes is working on coming out with their platform also. Um, so yeah, Na- Nano Knee is just it's a gimmick. Uh, it's really nothing different uh, than what's out there. So thank you, Dr. Kreiner. Now somebody has emailed us and is asking about total joints. Uh, But it's important to know that total joints are being evaluated on a case-by-case basis. And if your physician or doctor deems your surgery is urgent, the surgery will be performed. Um, Now we're going to continue on to our questions. This one is for Dr. Kim. Why should I choose as a patient to have surgery at Cahuilla Health and use Rosa if needed instead of going elsewhere or traveling up north or down south? Well, you should have surgery at Cahuilla um, because of the people. Um, I truly feel that it's the people that make up the hospital and not just some building on Mineral King Boulevard. It really starts with, you know, the surgical team. We have great preoperative nurses. Uh, We have great orthopedic surgeons. You know, we have the Rosa technology now. We have great surgical techs, anesthesiologists, first assist, you know, nurse practitioners, circulating nurses, packing nurses, physical therapists, and floor nurses. I mean, it's a team effort, and I believe it's the people that's really going to make a difference. Um, and so you should have surgery at Kuwait because of the people uh, and the team that we have. You know, we all work together uh, to place the patient first. We, we try to make it a good experience for the patient. Um, and I, I think the patient uh, will have a, a good experience coming to Kuwait. And uh, not only the people now, we have Rosa. Uh, we have Rosa to dial in precision. Um, and so uh, those are the reasons why I would recommend Kuwait. Thank you, Dr. Kim. And it truly is a a culture of caring for our community and caring for our patients. Um, Dr. Kreiner, if someone has a surgery or knee replacement with Rosa, will they have any physical limitations afterward? Because a lot of people are worried that I don't want to have a surgery. I'd rather do physical therapy or have a cortisone shot because I'm scared I won't be able to be to do things that I can do now. So uh frequently uh or it, it's a frequent concern the only thing i limit people on is i don't want you out running marathons um you're gonna wear your knee out faster if you're doing that if you want to go skiing please don't go down the black diamonds you know please don't go down moguls you know um uh and when i talk about running it's not that i, I always use this example with with patients in my office you know, if you're watching your grandkids and they're out in front of the house and then your four-year-old grandkids running out into the street and about to get hit by a car, by all means, go run after the your grandkid and keep them from getting hit by a car. That That's not going to ruin, you know, a knee replacement. I just wouldn't want you to, you know, pick up marathon running and run, you know, 50 miles a week because that's going to wear out the knee. Um, and then as far as, well, am I going to be able – to do the things I currently do. I would say that uh, if somebody's not doing that bad, then they're not really a candidate for knee replacement because usually the people that, you know, kind of like what Dr. Kim's kind of hit on a couple of times, you know, people who were doing knee replacements on, it's pretty drastically affecting their activities of daily living. They're having a hard time walking around a grocery store there, you know, it's like, oh man, I have to walk out to the mailbox to get mail. Gosh, my knee's really hurting a lot right now. And I better go get my cane. You know, those are usually the people we're doing knee replacements on. Um, I have a guy who's a real estate agent. He wasn't able to show houses. His knees were so bad, he couldn't go up and down the stairs. You know, so... Uh, and literally within two weeks of doing his knee replacement, he was already showing houses and going up and down stairs, which was rather impressive on his part um, that he that he was 
able to do that. And so, you know, uh, are you going to be able to do more with a knee replacement than you could before we did surgery? If we're doing it for the right reasons, which is debilitating knee arthritis, absolutely. It's a, it is an absolute life changer. It's one of my favorite surgeries to do. I love seeing people when they're like three months out, six months out, and you can tell that they are already doing significantly more. You know, I have patients who are planning, you know, a vacation and, you know, we're, you know, it's like nine months away. So then we're trying to time out getting their joint replacement done so that they can, you know, enjoy their vacation more and go, you know, walk around, you know, if they're going to Europe or they're, you know, they're going to Mexico or, you know, doing something where they're going to do some hiking so that they can enjoy it more. Um, and so the goal is always to get you more active after surgery than you were before surgery. I just want to take a moment to thank everybody who is currently joining us on social media. I know we're getting a lot of um, uh, comments and questions from you guys, so we really appreciate it. And Dr. Kim, we have some fan base as well, people saying hello. And a question for you. So somebody is asking what they can do um, or if there is a possibility that knee replacement revisions are possible. Yeah, uh, knee replacement revisions are possible. Um, certainly, we have to do a full workup before we do a revision operation. You know, there are, you know, there are you know, a couple of reasons that, are, that have to be ruled out, you know, before we even do that. Uh, the first and foremost, we always have to rule out infection. You know, we have to make sure that uh, there's no infection going on. Uh, and the setting of a knee replacement, that's, uh, that could be the source of the pain. So, you know, we have to make sure we rule out infection. Another reason why knee replacements fail over time is aseptic loosening or basically the, the metal is starting to come loose from the cement or the bone interface. Um, and so we do uh, testing for that. You know, we do a clinical exam. Sometimes we do a bone scan to test for that. Uh, and sometimes we can just see it on x-ray. It is just obvious. Um, and another one is instability. You know, some patients have instability in their knee, but again, you know, we would have to look at, you know, what are their symptoms? What do their x-rays look like? When did they have surgery? And these, all, all these things kind of play a role into uh, whether or not uh, a revision operation is indicated. Thank you, Dr. Kim. And the love keeps pouring in for you both on social media. We have Bobette Rosa, who says, Dr. Crino will be doing my knee replacement, and I appreciate you doing this video. Um, uh, on a side note, the robot has my last name. Thank you, and see you in two weeks. So she's very excited to be able to, to undergo the procedure and use Rosa. So perfect. Um, but we also have another question from Robert, who is asking, what is the lifespan of this type of knee replacement? I think we've covered this before, but if we want to just mention it one more time, Dr. Kreiner. Uh, yeah, so these, these are lasting uh, 30 to 40 years. And uh, we are a solid 15 years into since we changed the thing that was more or less failing and causing them to not last as long. And uh, some of the studies are showing 98% uh, survivorship at 15 years. Uh, one of the reasons we have an idea that it's 30 to 40 years, uh, and that comes from uh, testing done by these companies uh, where they actually um, they have calculations. They know how many cycles somebody's knee goes through on a yearly basis on average. And so they actually have in their warehouses in places where they do their research, knee replacements in fluid that simulates what a knee joint is like. And it's literally doing cycles of revolutions of the knee uh, 24 seven, and they're able to uh, measure the wear rate of their plas the, that plastic piece. And so, so, so far, um, their estimation uh, that they were telling us when they changed the technology, uh, so far, it looks like it's uh, true. So. Thank you, Dr. Kreiner. And one more time, we're getting a lot of feedback and comments from our community members. Gretchen Schmidt Weaver says, hi, Dr. Kim, very informative. Thank you. I'm assuming it's a former patient. So we appreciate you commenting in. And Dr. Kim, we also have a question regarding P 
people who may not be eligible for ROSA. So are there any cases or conditions or age that we should be aware of that are, may not be eligible to have this procedure using ROSA? Um, I think, you know, there, there really isn't a patient that is not eligible for ROSA. Um, I think if you're, a, uh, if you're a candidate for knee replacement surgery, um, then I think you're a candidate to, you know, for us to utilize the ROSA on that patient. Um, and so, you know, so, you know, I don't think there's any barriers for that. I don't think there's any criteria that needs to be checked or check marks for, in order for us to do ROSA. As long as you're a candidate, you're healthy enough to undergo knee replacement or knee surgery, then I think you're a candidate for the ROSA. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Dr. Kreiner, after any surgery, not just knee replacement, it's very important that people have um, rehabilitation. So how important is rehab after surgery and how does it help patients? So uh, in a lot of surgeries that we do in orthopedics, it's very important that people go to physical therapy. Not all of them. Uh, one of them, though, is uh, knee replacement. Uh, frequently, the course for physical therapy uh, for after knee replacement surgery, uh, depending on the patient, we I would say about half the time I have a home health physical therapy going to their house uh, during the first two weeks after surgery before I see them back in the office. Uh, and then if we didn't have them go out to them because we just, you know, our assessment more or less was that the patient was going to improve as much as I needed them to improve in that first two weeks on their own. But when I see them at the two week appointment, we are definitely going to be having them go to outpatient physical therapy, uh, which uh, is uh, uh, going to go to a facility uh, or an office. Uh, and then uh, there are several very good therapists uh, here around the Valley. So I always, you know, if you live in Porterville, you know, pro PT in Porterville is wonderful. If you live in Exeter, there's three really good therapy offices in Exeter. If you live in Dinuba, there's two. You know, if I sell you, we have five to six really good therapy offices. So uh, Tulare's got one, uh, Hanford's got two. So Lamore's got one. Anyway, they keep going. I know we're all, we know where they're at um, and uh, it's really critical. How long are you gonna do physical therapy for? That's variable. You know, you have some people for whatever reason, just really know how to bounce back from this surgery and I'll see them at six weeks and they walk in and they don't have a limp. They're not using a cane or a walker. Their range of motion is from zero to 120 degrees. And they're like, doc, do I still need to go to therapy? No, they, that person doesn't, you know? Uh, and then sometimes there are people who struggle a little bit more. And so uh, people end up going for three to four months uh, and, uh, so, so it's pretty variable, you know, uh, I think if you're a little bit older, uh, you're going to need more physical therapy. Um, the other thing that really, I think strongly influences how much therapy you need is, is how active were you able to be before surgery? Um, I have patients whose knee arthritis for whatever reason is so debilitating that they need to use a walker. Now, I never let somebody get to a walker because if I see you kind of going down that hill, I'm telling you, you need to do knee replacement. But sometimes people get referred to me who are using a walker because it's that debilitating. That patient is a lot less active. And as a result, those people tend to take a little bit longer to recover from a knee replacement, you know, than my patient who is just on the verge of like having to use a cane. That, you know, that person, they're still pretty active even though they probably have bone on bone arthritis. And so that person is um, gonna recover a little faster. So long answer to, you know, it, it's just very patient dependent. Before we go on to Dr. Kim, I just wanna share the comment that was on the screen earlier. Lisa St. Lawrence says, Dr. Kreiner is a good doctor. He did my shoulder and I'm doing so good. Thank you, Dr. Kreiner. So a lot of love for you guys and the work that you do for our community. Um, Dr. Kim, we received another question on social media. Um, Gretchen Schmidt Weaver asked question, if insurance doesn't approve robotic knee replacement surgery, is traditional still an option? 
Absolutely. I think we still do a great job using traditional instrumentation. You know, when I was training a fellowship, you know, that's all we did. We know we, we did uh, the traditional technique. And again, we do a, a great job uh, doing knee replacements, even without the ro uh, Rosa robot. Uh, Rosa robot is just an extra, just icing on the cake. You know, we still, uh, you know, again, majority of knee replacements across the nation, we do them without robotic technology. And so, you know, we still do a good job. I would say actually a great job uh, at Kauia Health here, uh, even without the use of robots. So one thing I was going to say, this is one of the difference between the Rosa robotic knee system and some of the other systems out there, because I can, I don't, I don't need a CT scan. Um, I, we have a special piece of equipment that we can use to get really cool x-rays that we can load into the system that can help us pre-op plan. Um, but uh, a lot of these other systems that are out there are reliant on a CT scan and that's where I think what the patient, the individual is asking about, uh, about getting authorization for a robotic total knee. We, I don't, there's no special authorization that I have to do uh, in order to use the Rosa robot. Uh, and so that, and that's one of the reasons why myself, Dr. Duncan, Dr. Kim pushed for this system is because it didn't really require me to do more work on the front end uh, before doing the case. Uh, and, and which is a big benefit, you know, and if it's less work for me, it's going to be less work for the patient too. For Kim, something that's on everybody's mind is COVID-19. So are there any COVID-19 restrictions currently for patients who need knee replacement surgery or um, and all, any of your patients or any future people who are deciding that they might need this type of surgery? Yeah, you know, that's, uh, you know, obviously the pandemic is hitting the nation uh, pretty hard right now with the new wave. Um, so everybody who's getting ready for uh, knee replacement surgery, we tested for COVID, you know, a few days before, the, you know, the date of the operation. Now, if they test positive during the pre-op visit, then we have to postpone the surgery. And, and that's because we don't want to put, we want the patient to isolate based on recommendations from the state. Uh, but we also don't want to risk also our staff as well. So, you know, if you do test positive for COVID-19, then, we, you know, we do recommend uh, postponing the surgery. Uh, certainly, if you are negative, then, yes, we proceed with surgery. In terms of, you know, performing knee replacements at Kauia, you know, we are still performing elective knee surgeries. Um, you know, there is a caveat, though. You know, we do have uh, sometimes bad availability issues, especially when the Delta variant was hitting us hard. You know, we, we, we couldn't be, you know, doing all our cases, you know, we had limited availability in terms of inpatient admissions. Uh, but right now we are still doing uh, most of our elective surgeries. But again, we're also pushing patients or I, I want to say pushing, but we're offering them the ability to go home the same day. So basically a true outpatient surgery. And most patients are able to, are, are willing to do that, especially with COVID. You know, they, they most of them, they, they don't want to stay in the hospital. You know, they want to get the surgery, work with physical therapy and try to get home, you know, and recover in the comfort of their own home. So um, again, you know, we we do have certain restrictions. Again, if you test positive, you know, we postpone, but we are still doing uh, surgeries right now at Kauia Health. Um, and the other restriction I would I would mention is, you know, that, that I get asked about is, you know, visitations, you know, so, you know, we do allow one visitor. Um, so, you know, you know, some patients have hesitations about coming to the hospital uh, by themselves. So you, we do allow one visitor from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So that uh, also allay their fears too. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kim. And this question is for both of you. Um, one of our viewers on, on the chat, um, she is Wanda A. Higgins Collin. She is asking if um, Rosa, can, can somebody pay this type of procedure with workers comp? Do any of you or either of you know the answer to this? So, uh, uh, I do a fair amount of work comp and uh, I do definitely have uh, work comp patients who I have done knee replacement surgery on. And uh, it again goes back to um, uh, the Rosa robot doesn't have, if we get you approved to do a knee replacement, we can use the robot. Uh, that doesn't come into uh, play. Uh, the best, the best way to think of the robot is it's just an extra tool that we have in the operating room now 
uh, that's going to further allow us to uh, be even, you know, we're already very accurate. Um, it's one thing I will say about uh, the, you know, the surgeons here in, or the orthopedic surgeons here in Visalia, and even the guys that are outside our group, everybody here is, we're, they're good surgeons, you know, and so this is just something uh, that just allows us to be precise to down to a half millimeter, uh, which may not be significant, is probably not significant a lot of times, but that's more precise than I can be with our typical uh, instrumentation. What this does is it gets rid of the outliers. If you go look at you know, 100 knee replacements that are done, you'll find, you know, five of them are not quite as aligned as as the surgeon probably wanted. And this gets rid of those five that are, you know, what we would call what we call outliers. Uh, so. Absolutely. Dr. Kim, did you have anything to add? Yeah, just just to piggyback on that, uh, Rosa outlier um, kind of comment there by Dr. Kiner. You know, Rosa really makes us make precise cuts. You know, we look at a soft tissue, intra-op. Uh, we look at the balance of the knee. And if we have to, let's say, dial in one degree of a little of an angle to our metal, because that's going to allow us to balance the knee better, That that's where the Rosa comes in, where robotic technology comes in. We cannot, with manual instrumentation, uh, using our naked eye, um, dial in one degree of angle to our metal, uh, 0.5 millimeter or even a one millimeter uh, change um, just using manual stuff. And so I think that's where the beauty of the Rosa comes in. Now, that being said, does it, will it affect outcomes, you know, 20 years down the line? We don't know yet, you know, early, you know, so you know, that that's the goal, you know, is that by dialing in this much precision that maybe it will last even longer than 30, 40 years, maybe, you know, and so uh, that that's our hope. And, um, you know, the Rosa has, has been a game changer. Absolutely. Dr. Kim and Dr. Kreiner. Now we run out of time. It is seven Oh two, but we want to thank all of our viewers on the line with us. I know we've had several questions and for any questions that have not been answered, please send them in the chat and we will do our very best to get those answered in the days or weeks to come. Um, and I also just want to share um, the wonderful comments that we've been getting from our community members saying, thank you, Dr. Kim. Thank you, Dr. Kreiner, for your very informative session. Thank you for this live. People are absolutely loving the fact that we can connect virtually with them, staying safe. Obviously, it's important that people do get their vaccinations because that just helps with uh, the surgeries that are provided, um, many like Rosa. And you guys mentioned that you know, Rose is just an extra tool that the team has now, but really it's the team, the work environment and the team, the experts behind it all. So we want to commend you for your amazing work and not just you, but just the entire team that is behind that. Did you guys have any last minute comments before we end our session today? Nope. Dr. Kim, we'll begin with you. Uh, no, I'm good. Dr. Kreiner? <laughs> No, no, I think we covered everything. You know, best thing, you know, if you got knee pain, come see one of the orthopedic surgeons here in Visalia. Everybody's really good. There's no reason to go up to uh, Fresno or down to Bakersfield. You know, stay local. We have great teams that do a great job. Well said. And again, if anybody does need surgery and they need the rehab to go with it, Kui Health does provide therapy specialists, our experts in physical therapy, not just here in Visalia, but in our rural health clinics as well. So we want to end our session today and thank you, our viewers. And of course, thank our wonderful experts today, Dr. Kim and Dr. Kreiner for joining us. We hope you have a great evening. Stay safe and happy 2022.